question is, are you ready? Hello, my name is Craig. I'm with CSR and Associates, and thanks for tuning into this video. We're going to give you all of the information you need to understand about how healthcare.gov and subsidies work on the exchange. And for you guys just tuning in, in case you don't know, we're going to cover some really important information for you in the event that you might be getting divorced or getting married. Also, if you want to be able to retire to age 65, prior to age 65, we want to talk about how you can do that and save yourself as much as $20,000 a year and push that forward in your retirement. And we're going to do all of that by really starting with a chart because we have to understand how subsidies work. And so when we look at the charts, I want to explain to you what you're looking at. Across the top is number of people in your household. Subsidies are available between 100% and 400% of federal poverty level. Why does that matter? Well, my buddy David is a family of four. He made $52,400 last year, and that put him at 200% of federal poverty level. I'll tell you why that matters in a minute. Me, I'm reading tax law all the time and studying healthcare law, so I'm single. I only made $17,609 last year, and that put me at 138% of federal poverty level. The reason why that matters is, depending on the percent of poverty level I'm at, that determines what percent of my income I pay for my health insurance. So 138% pays 3% of their income, 300% is going to pay 9.5% of their income. Then the question is, what happened to David? David was at 200% of federal poverty level. He's going to pay 6.3% of his income for his health insurance. We can look down here and say 52,000 times 0.063 divided by 12. David can insure his entire family for $275 a month. When I'm asked if anybody benefits from health care reform, absolutely, David's benefiting big time. What happened to me? Well, I was at 138% of federal poverty level. I'm going to pay 3% of my income. Well, if we go 17,000 times 0.03 divided by 12, Craig can get coverage for $44 a month. Then what's the $5 question? Yeah, Craig, but what kind of coverage do I get? There's four kinds of plans available on the exchange. Bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Subsidies are based on the silver level plan. So to give you some perspective here, we have silver level plans, 30 for the doctor, 60 for the specialist, $3,000 deductible, covers all the pre-existing conditions, cancer, heart attack, stroke, AIDS, diabetes, maternity. So everything's covered, unlimited lifetime maximum, so good coverage. The way this works is I'm going to enter David, I'm going to enter his wife, I'm going to enter his kids, and I come back to David and I say, David, your plan's going to cost $1,275. David says, hey, wait a second, Craig, you told me I was going to pay $275. That's right, David, that means you get a $1,000 subsidy to help you buy health insurance. Once we've established the $1,000, David can move up or down this chart however he wants. So if he said, hey, Craig, I can't afford $275, how much is the bronze plan? Bronze plan's $1,050. David's got a $1,000 subsidy. He's just going to pay $50 to insure his whole family. Oh, I want really good coverage. How much is the gold? Gold plan's $1,400. David's got a $1,000 subsidy, so he just pays $400 to insure his whole family. Well, then how does this work? One of the big misconceptions about the Affordable Care Act or healthcare.gov is that it's care. It's not care, it's a funding arrangement. What I mean by that is David's going to get the same plan, Blue Cross, Oscar, Ambetter, Cigna, etc. He gets the same plan, the same doctor's network, the same everything for it's Craig, who's paying $44, David's paying $275 or maybe somebody else is paying the whole $1,275 a month, but it's the same plan. So it's not care, it's a funding arrangement. The question we're really trying to ask here is, hey David, $1,275 is due for you. Are you paying all of it, some of it, none of it? And that's what we're trying to figure out. So the hard part about this is, I'm not asking David how much he made last year. I'm asking David how much he thinks he's gonna make this year. Well, this year hasn't happened yet, so David doesn't know. So we go to the exchange, and David picks a plan, Blue Cross, and he says, well, Craig, 
I made 52,000 last year, I made 52,000 the year before. I think I'm gonna make $52,000. We pick Blue Cross, he mails this $275 check to Blue Cross, federal government mails a $1,000 check to Blue Cross, and life is great. End of the year, David sits down with the accountant. How'd it go, David? Oh, it didn't go so good. I got laid off partway through the year due to COVID and only made $42,000. Oh, David, you shouldn't have paid $275 a month. You should have paid $175 a month. David's going to get a $1,200 refund right on his tax return. By the same token, how'd it go? Went great, got a promotion, got a raise, made $62,000. Oh, David, well, you shouldn't have paid $275. You should have paid $375. David owes $1,200 back due right on his tax return. So the other interesting thing that happens for David is because he's under 250% of federal poverty level, David qualifies for a second benefit called cost share. What cost share is going to do for him is lower his deductibles, lower his co-pays, lower his max out of pocket. To give you some perspective on that, we literally have clients that pay 70 cents a month. It's $1 for the doctor, three for the specialist, zero deductible, better than anything you can buy with any amount of money out of your pocket, and they're only paying 70 cents a month because of that cost share benefit. One of the things we have to realize about healthcare.gov is it doesn't work the way you're used to things working. One example of that would be we do backwards math. We don't do forwards math. Well, gosh, Craig, what are you talking about? Well, you're used to forwards math. How much for me? It's $200. What if I am my wife? It's another $200. What if I am my kids? It's another $200. Our math doesn't work that way. So Craig comes to me and he says, hey, I want to buy health insurance. How much do you make? $40,000. That puts Craig single making $40,000. He's at 300% of federal poverty level. At 300% of federal poverty level, Craig's going to pay 9.5% of his income for his health insurance. So we go 40,000 times 0.095 divided by 12. I say, hey, Craig, I can insure you for 316 bucks a month. And Craig says, hey, wait, I forgot about them two kids. Oh, now that makes Craig a family of three making $40,000. He's at 200% of federal poverty level, 200%. He's going to pay 6.3% of his income for his health insurance. 40,000 times 0.063 divided by 12. I say, hey, Craig, I'll insure you and the kids for $210 a month instead of just you for $316 a month because we do backwards math. More people cost less than less people. If he then said, well, I have a wife too. Now he's a family of four making 40,000 at 150% of poverty level. Oh, look, he's only going to pay 4% of his income for his health insurance. When we do the math, I say, hey, Craig, I'll insure you, your wife, and the kids for $160 a month instead of just you for $316 a month because we do backwards math. More people cost less than less people. The other thing that happens here is we have to understand how these numbers apply to things like retirement. I have people call me on the phone all the time. Maybe it's a married couple and they're 60, 61, 62 years old. They say, hey, Craig, we want to retire. We're trying to figure out how much the health insurance would be. And I say, well, how much are you going to make? They go, oh, we think we're going to make about $65,000 a year. And what makes up the 65,000? They got a couple of social security checks, a little bit of a pension, and maybe they work a little bit or they don't work a little bit. So great. At $65,000 a year, they can get really good coverage. It's about $300 a month, and their subsidy is going to be right around $1,600 a month. However, what we have to get them to understand is, if you break $68,960, you owe every dime of that subsidy back to the federal government. And they say, but, but Craig, my company likes to have me come back and do some consulting. I'm sorry, you can't afford to go back and do some consulting because if they make another $5,000, they owe every dime of their subsidy back to the federal government. 1,600 times 12 is over $20,000 that they owe back to the federal government because they made more than they should have. 
understanding where we're at on this line and how we keep ourselves under it can be huge. Now, in that case, if they worked and had earned income, maybe they can make an IRA contribution, a 401k contribution or something to keep their income below that. Because in our world, $68,000 and $98,000 is the same money. See, I'd have to earn $98,000, pay the taxes, then pay all the additional money for the health insurance. And so 68 and 98 is the same money. This is a big deal because people will say, but I can't live on 68. I really need 78,000. Well, if you need 78,000, you really need 108,000 because you're gonna pay so much more for your health insurance. The other thing that happens here is we have to look at what's going on with the rest of our chart. And so in a scenario like this, I had a guy call me up one day and he says, take my wife off, I just got divorced. The thing about that is, it's December 15th. And so I go pull his file. He's a married couple. They made about $65,000 last year. The problem with this is, you are what you are at the end of the year when you file your taxes. So when we go back and look at our chart, what happened to them was he made $65,000, but now that he's divorced, he's single. He makes too much money to get a subsidy. He'd already gotten it because it was December 15th. He owed his whole subsidy back to the federal government $9,600. She's now single. She doesn't make enough money to get a subsidy. Because the problem here is you have to make enough. And if you're under that amount, a lot of accountants will tell you, you owe the whole subsidy back to the federal government. Now, fortunately, we educate our clients and we read the law. And so I happen to know that what they owed back was a $300 flat fee for her. What hurts us is to know they owed $10,000 back to the federal government because they got divorced two weeks too early. The problem here was they're working through the divorce. They paid the attorneys. They split the assets. They thought they took all the whipping they were going to take. They call me on the phone just to take the wife off. And I unfortunately had to tell them they owed $10,000 back to the federal government because they got divorced two weeks too early. Had they waited until January, they wouldn't have owed that money back. Understanding the ramifications of that is huge. And we spend time trying to educate people that before you make these major decisions, get divorced, get married, et cetera, call and find out how that's gonna impact your insurance and what money you may or may not owe back or even get a refund. A lady calls me in November and she says, I'm getting married. Hold on just a minute, let me pull your chart. I checked it out, she's like right in here. She's paying a couple of hundred dollars a month for her health insurance. Her subsidy is around $800 a month. I asked her about her husband and how much he makes, and I realized once she gets married, she's going to be down here. I actually told her she wasn't getting married because if she got married, she owed about $9,000 back to the federal government. She postpones the wedding, doesn't get married until after the first of the year, and then thanks me profusely because who's got nine or $10,000 lying around that they're ready to mail to the federal government because they got married too early, got divorced too early, had babies, Think about Craig, you know, Craig gets divorced and this year he claims the kids, next year he doesn't. The next year he claims the kids, the next year he doesn't. All of these things impact how much I pay for my health insurance, who can I insure, and what we pay for that. So, one of the other things that happens here is we had a change in alimony law. So in the old days, Craig earned income, I made $70,000. And when I made the $70,000 and I paid $20,000 to my ex-wife, that came off my taxable income and I only paid taxes as if I'd made fifty. dollars She then received $20,000 and she paid $20,000 taxes, or paid taxes on $20,000 for that. But with the new tax law, what they've said is, Craig's going to earn $70,000 and then pay taxes as if he earned $70,000. The ex-wife is going to receive the $20,000 tax-free. When we go back to our chart and we see the ramifications of that, it's actually pretty big. Because we're back to Craig makes 70, but now he's single. So instead of him getting a subsidy like he would have before and pay a couple of hundred dollars for his health insurance, now he pays full price. 
about 95, 950 bucks a month. The ex-wife has no income. She doesn't make enough money to receive a subsidy because the alimony she receives now is tax-free. So instead of her premium being 70 cents or $10 or $20 a month, she has to pay full premium for her health insurance as well. And maybe she's in the 900 or $950 a month range. These are big things and they make a big difference. I used to think that understanding income was simple. They said, oh, plug in your income and get your number. Then I started realizing there's all kinds of income. There's W-2, there's self-employment, social security, supplemental social security, social security, disability, alimony, child support, dividend income. Some of these things we have to count, some of these things we don't. Now that you understand how subsidies work on healthcare.gov, what you wanna do when you're doing applications is making sure you're getting the information correct. Understanding what your income is, what you count, what you don't count, who you're claiming on your tax return, so that when your application gets done and at the end of the year when you sit down with the accountant, you don't have big ramifications from that by owing a lot of money back. We hope that you found this information helpful and we're so glad that you were able to join us today. Please let us know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for watching. See ya.